Hello and welcome. I'm back again with another ranked battle and today I'm in the tier 7 Polish destroyer the Buiskowica. This match is on the map um, Atlantic I believe and I headed straight towards the ACAP because uh, that's what we decided to go towards with our team. Notice that I actually used the speed boost. I pinged that ally many times to annoy him because he should not be going towards the B area because we had decided towards the A cap so you shouldn't just go off on your own like that. It's just not good. Like yes he says that he will clear B but um, we should be together because it's likely that we will face destroyers at A and if you notice the um, concealment range actually if an enemy destroyer enters the A cap I will be spotted. So we definitely need the backup here. I'm gonna sit here on the edge of the cap zone because I don't want to move forwards, I want to be as far away as possible from the enemies while still inside the cap zone. I slow down obviously so that I don't have to uh, keep maneuvering along the edge and once I get spotted I'm gonna use smoke and move ahead a tiny bit if I get spotted. If um, I can get the cap without enemies coming here then I'll just leave. By the way, notice that I used speed boost at the start to get into the cap. This is really important because it can give your team a slight advantage. If you get that one tick before the enemy team, that can literally decide the game. Anyways, um, I open fire now after I started moving. Well, unfortunately, one of our cruisers was already destroyed in like one hit. It was the Budioni. It's, it's unfortunate, but I guess it does happen. Sometimes battleships get incredible luck and the cruiser just vanishes, even if the cruiser uh, didn't turn or did turn. Like in this case, yes, the cruiser turned, broadside on, but then again, if you look at the positioning, then the cruiser would have gotten even closer than the enemy. And that would have made it even more likely to happen, so the cruiser had to turn away. Otherwise, if he stays in that positioning, then he will eventually just die anyway. Anyways, we see the enemy Buscovica who kept the B. I wanted to head towards B to cap it, but enemy DDs weren't obviously there. I think I will have to smoke here. Because uh, the Buscovica did smoke. I will drop torpedoes on the Buscovica there. Because I think the Buscovica is going to stand still in that smoke. And the reason why I keep sailing ahead is because I think that I can dodge a lot of these shots. Because the Buscovica went into the smoke, I thought that... Um, because he was the one spotting me, originally if I could get behind that island then I would have been fine. Unfortunately that's not the case because there was also a Mutsuki. Anyways, um, I didn't take all that much damage. Okay, I guess half my HP is a lot. Anyways, I know more or less where the Buscovica is so I'm gonna torpedo him. If the Buscovica doesn't move it is very likely that he will get hit by these. He might move though. Um, this is why you don't fire... Um, like um, widespread salvo and this just passed between me uh, if those had been on point I would have just been dead nothing I can do unfortunately this is how um, destroyers are yes you could use smoke and then start and then not stay in here there because it's a torpedo magnet but in that case you actually waste the smoke pretty much because you can't take advantage of it in any real way to deal any damage and it's very difficult to fire your guns in something like a Buscovica and well this is why you fire a narrow spread because um, well that Buscovica died and his torpedoes did not kill me. I am a bit wary about uh, Mutsuki there though she might drop torpedoes and also at this point the smoke might disappear soon. By the way if there's something I need to still learn in a destroyer it's to pay attention to smoke duration. I don't even know how long the smoke can last. Let alone pay attention to the clock to know whether the smoke is disappearing or not. That is something I definitely need to do. In fact, I'll try to do it after this match. Anyways, I saw the Mutskim. At this point, um, we are in the lead because we got the ACAP earlier. We did trade ships, but uh, that's okay. Although, let's be honest, that uh, Buscovica kill is a bit a shot in the dark. Then again, the Budioni kill 
by the enemies is rather lucky too. Unfortunately, I was spotted there for a moment. Uh, I think these islands don't... Uh, I thought these islands would give a uh, cut line of sight, but apparently they didn't. Or there's something else spotting me, which I can't tell. Because uh, the cruiser straight behind me, that one was not in range. Anyways, we are maneuvering into the A-cap. Actually, this is a bit bad because the B-cap is a bit of a superior positioning because of the way islands are there. However, I think it'll be okay. Well, as long as that one cruiser that's really far away uh, comes back. I think our chores is going to die though. But we are going to probably set this Colorado on fire. Or the Faragut is. I'm going to be firing AP because... A Colorado has incredible, um, what's it called, uh, HE resistance. By the way, notice how I used smoke earlier. I told the Chores that I was going to smoke him. Unfortunately, he still died to it. But what I wanted to do, that ram that happened, was actually what, what I really wanted. Because if I had been able to aim my ship, or steer my ship a bit better and if the shore hadn't been so low HP. What could have happened is that um, uh, I could have like rammed into the chores in a way where the chores would um, pull me along and that would have put the smoke on. Anyways I fire AP at the Colorado like I said because the Colorado has incredible AP resistant, HE resistance but AP on the superstructure can deal thousands of damage even at this kind of range. At the moment I want to keep moving a little bit. I want there to be some momentum in my ship in any direction. At least at some point. Because we just saw the Mitski, she probably used torpedoes. So it's important. Although I guess it's okay if I stand here because this uh, Nagata is going to be in front of me. And that means that it doesn't matter. Oh look, torpedo. That might have hit me if it wasn't for this Nagato. But luckily I... Uh, had the Nagata there. By the way, the Nagata also used my smoke, so uh, I think it's a fair trade that uh, he took the torpedo for me while I helped him tank with uh, the smoke screen. Anyways, I'm gonna fire HE at the Colorado there because uh, I might get a fire, that would be good. If not, it's okay. I mean, it, HE can still deal damage, especially at this range, it's kind of difficult to get the AP to deal much damage. Not to mention we just want fires, because the Colorado is running away, so even if she took extra a few thousand damage, it wouldn't make much of a difference. But a uh, fire, when he's running away, would be very good. Anyways, I don't fear that I'm gonna be shot too much, although the fact that I'm spotted means there's a Mutsuki around. Because my concealment range while firing should be something like... Um, 11.1 kilometers. I, I, I actually usually know this. By the way, if you don't know your concealed fire range, you can hover over your ship icon. Like, look at the name um, above the compass. Uh, when you hover your mouse over the ship icon there, I, it will tell you the fire range, etc. By the way, uh, there is also an option in this... Um, Minimap, look at the gears next to the minimap. If you click that, you can select, um, uh, what's it called, uh, show last positions. That's something I have done now. Anyways, uh, I told my Nagata friend here that I have smoke up again. So I told him to stop moving and I headed straight for him. And I will cover him with smoke now. Uh, because the Mutsuki just fired torpedoes, it would actually be safe to just... Um, you know, stop and stay here and just fire. I think this smoke is very important for the Nagata because she was very low HP. Oh, Mutsuki! Very good. I guess I should fire. Oh, it seems the Mutsuki is going to uh, slow down, so I'm gonna torpedo her. Well, once she uses smoke, of course. And she did. Okay. Um, I'm gonna turn the other way, I guess. Because the island was in the way. On top of that, I was being shot, so I don't really want to be stuck there. Uh, the Mutsuki fired torpedoes, but uh, the Nagato has some warning. Uh, she should be able to not take more than one, I think. But what I really want to do now is go into the 
the smokescreen to kill the Mutsuki. I think if I can kill the Mutsuki, even if it's just a straight up trade, it'll be good enough. But then again, the Mutsuki just used the smokescreen, so if I find her and kill her, I can use her own smokescreen and she shouldn't have torpedoes. But just in case, I'm gonna go in a direction where she doesn't have an angle for torpedoes on me. On top of that, this also puts me in a good angle to shoot the uh, Colorado. I'm gonna drop one uh, torpedo salvo there and the other on the other way because I just want to hedge my bets. I don't think either of them are really going to hit, but uh, just in case, I might get lucky because I don't think I'm gonna get out of this alive anyway, so... Because there's a plane straight above me and I mean, there was a battleship at like six kilometers. That battleship is gonna hit like three AP shells and that's already 3000 damage, let alone the cruiser that's gonna keep shelling. And I'm spotted. Oh my god, it's a chores. Colorado is hidden. This is even worse. Because there's a second cruiser there as well, and a battleship. I'll try running, but I don't think it'll work very well. Because, you know, this chores is at 5 kilometers. Maybe this will give my team some time to uh, shell, because, oh my god, I only took 700 damage from that. Now that is very surprising, but look at this, 5000 damage from the Colorado. And this finished me, but somebody got a really lucky shot on the chores and killed her outright. That's, that's very useful for us. At this point, there's only two enemy ships left, so it's okay. We have four ships, so we should handily win this. Um... But, um, I know how this game goes, so let's not end the re or video just right here, because uh, it's it's not quite done yet. Because if you look at this, that uh, Nagata is fairly low HP, that Miyoko is fairly low HP, this Faragot is fairly low HP. Yes, we have one fairly healthy battleship left, but that one's a bit far away. And this York is rather healthy. Oh, half HP. And it seems the Snagata is getting torpedoed. Um, well, at least it's only one torpedo, but the Orc could definitely kill Iron Sky. And, yep. Oh, never mind, he still had... Oh! Wow, look at this damage. Still couldn't kill the Orc. But the Orc's torpedoes plus uh, AP salvo apparently was enough. And the secondary set uh, Iron Sky on fire. Really unfortunate for this Nagato, but that's okay, we still have... Oh, damn, we only have two ships! The... the Miyoko died too! Why is this Faragut? Oh my god, what the hell? We are in the lead in points, just defend the A cap. don't fire, because if you die, we are behind, and they can just run away. Oh my god, Faragut, no, stop, 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 stop firing! Stop firing, man! Just let the battleship deal with it. Just spot for him. Don't do anything else. Just spot for the battleship, please. Because if you die, you might very well just lose the game. Oh, oh my... What the hell? What? 9 HP and it ticked down to 7. Not dead. 7. From 9 HP. Why are you still firing, Faragot? Oh my god. The York had a few thousand HP, just let the battleship handle it. Jesus. Why would you do this, Faragut? Do you like... Why? Just why? Please don't open up on the Colorado. Please, 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 please. You just need to wait it out and you will win the game. In fact, you should head towards the B-cap, or you should have headed towards the B-cap earlier already. Because if the Colorado runs away or, I don't know, suddenly kills your Fuso and then tries to take the A-cap, you will be able to take the B-cap in return and then the Colorado is like, well, damn, I'm screwed because we have enough points. Our points are enough in the lead. I like how the... Um, I like how Valarel says that Faragut should say a big thank you to Wargaming for RG. But... He, really, the Faragut should never have shot the York there. That was such a bad thing to do. Because, like, 
I mean, okay, I can understand the idea, oh yeah, I'm gonna kill the, finish this York and then the game's in the bag. But if you had died, we might have lost just from that and we were ahead, so it was a really bad decision in my opinion. You just got incredibly lucky that it didn't work out poorly for you. But at this point, the, because the Colorado wasn't heading towards the ACAP, it, the game's over. They have lost, even if he kills the Fuso. Actually, I guess if he kills the Fuso, he might be able to turn around and maybe get to the ACAP, but by that time, the Faragut is definitely in the B cap. <sighs> this is crazy. Really crazy. Because the thing is that the orc was a cruiser, she could have run away, and like, what could the Fusa do? Nothing really, because the Fusa can't keep up with a orc, and if the orc uses silence to hide, nothing will spot them, they would have won if uh, the Faragut had died, so he was really playing with fire. Anyways, I made 300,000 credits, uh, 2 torpedo hits, 45,000 damage, I was number 1 with uh, 1800 experience, this Fusa played well though, 3 kills and... 1500 experience, that's a really good result. And I think so did this Nagato. Like, both battleships played decently. So I did some damage. Like, the, this is actually the reason why I don't like uh, destroyers so much in rank. Because if your battleships aren't very good or cruises, then you just don't have much chance to kill the enemy battleships because destroyers tend to not do enough damage. Anyways, I made a whole bunch of experience and stuff. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, then please subscribe and thanks for watching.